I was in Beirut. Can everybody hear me at the back? Good. I was in Beirut last year, last summer. It was hot, it was humid, it was dusty. I was at a, a really busy intersection and I was standing there staring at an empty park, parking space in front of me. And I was cursing. And when I'm angry and I'm cursing, I'm a... Uh, perfect timing. I am... Um, my accent, my Irish accent comes out very strong. All around me, I'm in an area where no English is spoken, only Arabic. I've been here a week. I've never spoken Arabic before, so I'm, I'm this white, bald, red-bearded Irish man cursing at an empty parking space. The reason why is that the car that had been there was a taxi. In the taxi, I had put my bicycle, and the taxi had gone. I trust people. As a photographer, everything that I do is based on trust. That previous night, I'd taken a taxi, and the taxi driver had... I was, yeah, I was stuffing a chicken shawarma down my neck. I had garlic sauce on my face. I offered him some of the chicken shawarma. We shared the chicken shawarma. We had a bond. We had a connection. It was good. Um, he said to me that why don't you come to my sister's home the next day? We can have some coffee, we can have some, um, some tea, biscuits. I said, great, sounds good. So I met him at this intersection. He parked his car. I put my bike into the back of his car because we were going to walk into the area. We began to walk in. Um, we found his sister's home. And I spent the afternoon there, basically. It was nice. I was talking to his sister's kids, they, they spoke English, I was talking about their dreams, about just life there, really. Um, so, looking at the parking space, I had two choices. Go home, take a cab, drink some mint tea, do yoga the following morning, forget about it, bike's gone, okay. Or, I could, it was getting dark as well or walk back into the area that I didn't know, that I didn't speak any of the language, try and find the apartment in this maze of alleyways and try and explain to the sister that my, my bike, that, his brother, that her brother had taken my bike. What did I do? I began to walk back in, night was falling, I left the main street and I went into a maze of a labyrinth of um, laneways. It was dark, there was no light, and I began to see things, you know, people were shouting, I saw guns, um, I wasn't sure if they were shouting at me, but I kept walking. Soon sort of people started to follow me, and I heard gunfire nearby. I looked up into the sky in between the buildings and I saw this this arc of red light just flashing, carving, carving a piece out of the night sky. I kept, I kept going. Somebody that started to follow me spoke English and I explained to him where I was going. I eventually found the apartment where I spent the afternoon. So good. I climbed up the stairs. Uh, there, was, there were puddles, there was trash, um, it was in the dark. I found my way up to the metal door, no lights. I started to bang on the metal door loudly. And in the confines of the building and the construction around the apartment block, um, I, it sounded really, really loud, basically. And I banged louder and louder. No one was there, the lights were or no one answered the door. The guys that I was with brought me back through the labyrinth, um, past the guys with the guns, past the rats in the shadows, past a lot of shadows, um, out onto a busier street where there was a falafel shop. They brought me into the, fa the falafel shop and there's a group of guys in there. It seemed like the owner, um, he took an interest in me who's this guy in our area and what's he doing? The guy who spoke English ex explained to him, his name was Odai and the guy who owned the shop 
um, had a belly like a watermelon and arms like like cedar tree trunks. A big guy, covered in tattoos, and um, he basically we went back to the apartment together. Nobody there again. I took out my camera. I taken photographs of the family during the day. I showed him the picture of the taxi driver. He took out his phone, alhamdulillah, clicked um, the screen on my photograph and said, give us three days and you will have your bike back. Don't go to the police. I said, okay. I was brought out of the area. I took a service home. Um, it was late. It was, at that stage, it was 10, 10 or 11. Next day came. I phoned them, said, no, give us more time. Day after, I'm sitting there at home. And I hear my name being shouted on the street. So I'm here a week. I look out, and the, what I see outside on the street is the taxi driver. And I walk down to him, and he starts to apologize immediately. Um, he pulled my bike from the back of his car, gave it back to me and just said sorry and, and he clearly said to me please tell your friends that you have your bicycle back I'm sorry and I don't want any trouble with you I smiled at him again everything is based on trust he said that people took him and he had to leave the area quickly, so he left in his car. That was his gateway out. I'm not confrontational, so I wish him and his son and his family well. And um, the guys that helped me in the area, Abud and his crew, and Odai and so the younger crew, um, they are now the people that I spend most of my time with. They've taught me, they're teaching me Arabic, and they're the guys that I hang with daily. I still see the taxi driver. <laughs> Beirut is small, and I've seen him four or five times, and he always looks, he always looks at me a little bit, his eyes always widen, and they open up more when he sees me and I ask him how his family is and I wish him well and the reason why I'm at the point now is because uh, I still trust if, if I hadn't trusted the taxi driver I wouldn't have met my friends now I wouldn't have learned Arabic and I wouldn't be enjoying my time here as much um, as part of the community that I'm in